31 years after her son vanished, someone tells cops to go to KFC in Connecticut. The moment was finally here. She would get the answers that she was looking for. The truth was so close. Lineth felt that what she had endured was something that no mother should ever have to. She had never thought that this would happen to her. She didn't wish this on her worst enemy. She got to the Connecticut airport which was so far away from her hometown in Canada. She was at the airport and now she would have her answers. The anticipation was 31 years worth. Lineth got to a dollar store in Islington Avenue, it was a hot day outside being June. She was going there to pick up her son from his father who said they'd meet her there at 4 in the afternoon. The year was 1987. Germaine's parents separated when he was very young. Even with shared custody, he was overall a joyful boy without anything wrong with him. Lineth's world was always lit up when she saw her baby smile. But she didn't know what would happen next. Since Germaine was with his father Lineth could do all the things that were harder with a child. She ran errands like grocery shopping. She still thought about her child even when he was away, she saw a stuffed toy that reminded her of him. It was a cute lion plush with her boy's brown eyes. She was happy at that moment but didn't know what was to come. She couldn't help but stare at the clock. It was just past 4 p.m. now. She then noticed that a family across the street were walking down the road, they were all happy together. She noticed that the small boy on top of his father's shoulders reminded her of Germaine. She smiled at the family as they walked past. The time was now 4.09. As it kept getting further from their arranged pickup time, she began to feel a knot in her stomach. It was now 4.20 and she could feel her pulse racing. Alan and Germaine were nowhere to be seen and she started worrying over the welfare of her boy. She felt herself lose her balance and fall over, dropping the plush animal on the concrete. When she realizes what happened she sprints to her car and gets in. She fumbles with her phone and calls the police and puts her car in gear, speeding off and leaving the cute fluffy animal on the cold ground. Lineth's home is quieter than a whisper. She sits on her kitchen chair with a tear-stained face and a pounding headache. Two days had passed since she had dialed 911 in her car. Where she had been waiting excitedly for her child and to show him what she'd bought just for him. It had now been a few months since the incident outside the dollar store. The police had done a thorough search for her boy but came up empty-handed. Lineth was inconsolable. Time kept turning and Lineth found herself sitting crying on her son's 25th birthday in her house all alone. What had happened? Not knowing made it so much worse. Many different agencies had attempted to find her son. The Missing Children's Society of Canada was still trying to find her boy. Even with just a few photos and memories to remember Germaine by she still was determined as ever. She was suspicious of her estranged husband stealing away her child and moving them both to America. But there was nothing to back it up. Soon though, there would be a surprising break in this long-winded and heart-wrenching case. Even in the US resources were allocated to finding Germaine. The Charlie Project is a database that logs every missing child or adult that might be in America. Even with all of this, there was no evidence to go on. But one person out there was dedicated to finding Germaine, no matter what the cost. And he would let nothing stop him. Ted Davis, a retired police officer, worked with the Missing Children's Society of Canada for 30 years and had met with Lineth to talk about her son. Seeing the pain in her heart he swore that he'd find out what happened to her boy. With Ted now involved, there was a huge break in the case after three decades of no leads at all. The 30-year-old case was about to have some light shed on it. That same year, Ted had attended a conference alongside members of the Toronto Police and representatives of the United States. When at the event, the attendees started to discuss Germaine's disappearance which ultimately sparked further interest. As Ted left the conference little did he know investigators would have some fresh leads to follow. By the end of summer 2018, investigators had got in contact with numerous people who were Alan's acquaintances. With each person they spoke to, investigators hoped they would be able to get some vital information. Some suggested that Alan may have made his way 500 miles east of Toronto, residing in Connecticut. 
But it wasn't until they spoke to one of Alan's closet friends that they would land a crucial clue that would finally lead police to Germain. Supposedly, Alan had created a new name, a new alias, and a brand new identity. Going by the name as Haley Randolph de Souza, police knew they were one step closer to finding out what happened to Germain. They searched official databases and social media and finally, they found a match, an elderly man and aged man living in Vernon, a town close to the Connecticut capital of Hartford. Could this be them? If so, does that mean Germain is alive? National Center for Missing and Exploited Children With the mystery finally about to be solved, investigators enlisted forensic experts to help join the case. They examined the driver's license photo that was on record for D'Souza's son. And slowly but surely in October 2018, the team was able to confirm what they had all been hoping for. That D'Souza's son and Germain were probably the same. They had a match. But first, they had to catch Alan. Investigators were excited that they finally had some answers. But they knew they needed to make a move, they had to find Alan before it was too late. An anonymous source claimed Alan often spent his time at the local KFC, he was friendly with the staff, and he sure did love the food. And so, investigators set off to the KFC ready to bring Alan to justice and make him pay for his crimes. But would that be the case today? This is the police, screams a member of the Connecticut Police Department as they race inside the KFC restaurant. The team scanned the room looking for Alan, while startled and confused employees stand around. Then they notice an elderly man sitting in the corner of the room. He puts his hands up and the police immediately corner him, and the man confirms that he is the fugitive they're looking for. But where was Germain? Police suspected that back in 1986 Allen had fled Toronto with Germain and traveled to the United States with the two reportedly sharing an apartment in Connecticut since 2004. Handcuffing Allen before leading him outside, the police hear a voice. Dad? Suddenly, a middle-aged man walks around the corner. A middle-aged man with big brown eyes. Just like Germain. The father and son duo, unbeknownst to the son, lived a life of lies for decades and decades. After fleeing Canada, Alan had managed to acquire fake documents, residing in New York, North Carolina, and then settling in Connecticut. When living in Vernon, Alan found employment as a trucker and as an engineer, while Germain worked for the state. Little did Germain know, his whole life had been a lie. National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. All his life Germain had questions about his mother. His dad told him she passed away during childbirth but he was pretty ambiguous about the details. Germain remembers seeing his friends get picked up from school by their mothers. Germain never had that. And it wasn't until he turned 33 that the truth about his mother would come to light. Standing and weeping in court as his father's lies and deceitfulness came to light, Germain sobbed into his tissue. How could his father do such a thing? His heart stops to hear that Alan would not be facing charges for kidnappings. Instead, he would be extradited to Canada to face further charges. As he steps out of court, Germain is lost for words. With thousands of questions running through his mind, a sudden realization hits him. His mother is in fact, alive. Lineth is speechless. She has just got off the phone with Ted. They've found Germain. Her baby boy. He's alive. He's safe. She had been waiting for this moment for 31 years. Overwhelmed with emotion, Lineth breaks down, tears falling from her face. She's going to see her baby boy again. So, Lineth had finally received the news that she had been hoping and waiting for for the last three decades. Words can't express what I felt, she said at a press conference in 2018. The words, your son is alive, we found him, that is breathtaking. The overjoyed mother then boarded a plane to Connecticut. She couldn't wait to reunite with her long-lost son. Standing in the pickup area at Connecticut Airport, Lineth is about to be reunited with her son after 30 years. She can't believe it. What will he look like? Suddenly, a tall, dark figure appears, walking towards Lineth. Instantly she recognizes the face and those big brown eyes. Her heart stops. It's her son. It's Germaine. 
Running towards each other with tears streaming down their faces, Lineth and Jermaine crash into each other with a warm embrace. Both are crying and overwhelmed with emotion. Squeezing each other tight, they both have so many questions. But for now, they just hug each other tight, refusing to ever let go again. I grabbed him and squeezed his head, I want to feel if he's real, she said through tears. I touched him and I said, oh my god, my baby. Although Jermaine has declined to give any public interviews as yet, Lineth mentioned that he made a touching comment when they met he said that they shared the same eyes. After Lineth was reunited with Jermaine at last, the pair were able to spend some quality time together at last. Lineth was eager to learn about Jermaine's life and what had happened in the last 31 years. Lineth even bought ingredients to make Jermaine a home-cooked dinner, only to find out that he is a vegetarian. But Jermaine decided to make an exception. He said, you know what, mommy? Cook the chicken. I'm gonna eat the chicken, Lineth recalled. For the time being, it is unclear if Lineth will relocate to be closer to her long-lost son. However, the happy mother did tell reporters that she will do everything in her power to make sure they are never separated again. Then, Lineth went on to open up about the devastating actions that Alan had taken all those years ago. I just thought it was sad for him to have done what he did, Lineth confessed. You never take a child from its parent, no matter what. The mother also coming to terms with the fact that her son had a whole other life before she came back into the picture. I have to respect the fact that he was a child, he didn't know anything, she explained. So, what was given to him, he had no choice but to live with that, Lineth continued. And so, if the name that he has right now, he would like to respect that, then I'm gonna stand with him. With that being said however, Lineth admitted that calling her son by his new name may always be difficult. To me, my son has always been Jermaine, so yes, that sticks for me, she explained. During a news conference, Lineth also took the time to give special thanks to all those people on the case, all those people who never gave up the search for her missing boy. Lineth made special mention of the MCSC and the authorities on both sides of the border. Furthermore, she hoped that her story might inspire other parents in her situation to never give up their faith. I am the proof that after 31 long years of suffering, 31 long years, one should never give up, Lineth explained. But be patient, be strong, and believe that all things are possible, and that anything can transpire. Meanwhile, John Durham, Connecticut's U.S. attorney, spoke about all of the investigators who had worked so long and hard to bring Jermaine home. After taking his son away from his son's mother, this defendant is alleged to have lived a lie for the last 31 years in violation of numerous U.S. laws, Durham said in an official statement in 2018. We thank the many law enforcement agencies in the U.S. and Canada that have investigated this matter, worked hard to apprehend this fugitive, and finally provided some answers to a mother who has suffered with her son's absence for far too long. And, according to the experts, Jermaine's disappearance is an exception to the rule in what is actually a surprisingly common crime. This is believed to be the longest case in North America, if possibly not the world, where an abducted child is reunited with a parent where they're both in safe condition, Banks explained.